The inspiration for being a botanical artist, I think, goes way back to my early childhood, where I was born and brought up in West Africa, and traveling into the bush with my father to collect plants. I do remember coming back and, and drawing things, and I used to do a lot of black and white line drawings, but very detailed line drawings. Art was always the focus, and so obviously going to university, I knew exactly the course I wanted to do. That's when I decided I wanted to do art full-time and train as an artist. I remember we were doing figure drawing as part of um, part of the degree, and uh, the figure drawing was sort of loosening up and, and lots of uh, big, big movements and drawing with your eyes closed and doing all sorts of different exercises, and I couldn't understand why we were doing that, and all I wanted to do was do the details. You know, the, the hands or the feet or, you know, and it was actually a shame because if I had done all the big movements and things, it would have given me a lot better idea of, of shape and movement and, and spontaneity, which I've learnt and has come later. But yes, I was always concentrating on, on the detail and wanting to get down to the detail. My name is Sue Wickerson. I draw plants in fine detail and try and capture them in a sort of scientific way. I love gardening, I love plants. The garden gets a little bit overgrown when I'm really busy with deadlines. With the plants, you can get the various stages of the plants, so you can see them, which is perfect reference for the illustration. My life is quite busy with animals that have ended up here. And so we've got donkeys here, horses, cats, dogs, geese. My definition of botanical art is to record a plant as accurately as you can. Uh, I try and get movement into my, into my work, so I always look for the curves and, and the movement in, in a plant, which is obviously there's a lot. And if you can capture that movement in your painting, then it makes it a much more interesting painting. Accurate, studied, meticulous, detailed. That's what botanical art is all about. It's all about those little fine nuances of texture, of change in the direction of hairs on a, on a, on a plant. My favourite subjects within botanical art are looking for more unusual plants, whether it's travelling to find them or whether it's the unusual you know, in my own environment. So it depends on the project that I'm working on and if they're slightly weird, then that makes it more interesting as well. My inspiration comes obviously directly from the plants, because you, that's you know, exactly who you're working with or what you're working with. Other botanical artists and looking back at history, looking at contemporaries, seeing how other people do things and just you know, getting inspiration from people who are, who are better than you. There's always going to be people who are better than you and seeing how they do something and, and just getting the joy from seeing excellent botanical art. The research for um, a particular painting that I'm working on obviously would be to get the plant itself, you have to work from living material, that's absolutely essential. So you can understand the structure of the plant, you can see how it fits together, you can do the dissection work on it. Then it's a, a series of making a lot of colour notes. So sketches, doing layout drawings to get the overall composition of the work, which has to be accurate, um, scientifically accurate, but also aesthetically pleasing. So there are lots of stages in the research. I work in watercolour. Uh, the tools that I use for my work are um, obviously pencils to do the initial drawings and then um, brushes, very fine sable brushes. Um, I work in ink, so uh, very fine ink drawings uh, like the, um, the old botanical drawings or uh, microscope work and you always work with, with pen and ink, so for line drawings. But for painting, um, watercolour painting, watercolour technique is my only medium. Wetting the paper, dropping the paint onto it and then gradually building up layer upon layer of paint until you get to an intensity of colour and then you have to go back with what you call dry brush work and then you, you get the very very fine little details or hairs or that's the sort of luxury bit at the end that's the really fun bit when you're really getting into the minute detail of the plant so working with the plants it's the whole process of, of enjoying the plant and being with it and um, capturing as accurately as you can. I try and bring in Movement, humour, some things that are more unusual. So I, I think that's probably what people um, you know, are attracted to in my work. It's very special. You, whether you see your work on a stamp, because I've worked in stamps, I've worked in books, I've worked in magazines, um, or to have an exhibition of your work, it's, it's a proud moment and it's something really special and something that you're lucky that, you know, you, that you're able to share or that people want to see your work is, is, is very humbling and very special. I've been really lucky to have certain um, key people in my life who've, who've helped me. Mentors who have improved my work, got the best out of me, questioned why I do things, and I've said don't hold anything back, and they don't, and you think, gosh, okay, but that's how you learn, that's how you improve. And so people will um, you know, see things in a different way, and that helps you, or helps me, to really see my work uh, better, 
to challenge what I'm doing, to try and pull out the best in me. I can't imagine life without my art. It's, it's part of me, it's who I am, it's, it's my expression, it's what I share with people, what I hope people will enjoy. Obviously art to me is in the plants, it's in natural history, art is everywhere. There's art in everything, it's just to find it and to see it and to be aware of it and to enjoy it, that's the most important thing, to enjoy it.